And one of the biggest changes that I'm hearing is that you still have to pass the ACFT. In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips for AIT, how to make the best out of your AIT experience, especially now during COVID. Hard work, hard work. Hard work, hard work. and please shop my brand army princess collection i am going to link it below with a discount code for anybody coming from youtube make sure you check me out support the brand let's get into this video i want to give you more of my life give you more of the insight of my life as a military spouse as a dual military mother family wife all of that jazz because i know that y'all like to know what's going on on the inside and it also gives people insight as far as you know just a day in the life of a military woman that's what my channel is centered around but i don't want to completely leave y'all hanging i still want to give you the informational video so this video is for you this video is an informational video and i am going to take it all the way back to ait so i want to do a mini series here on my channel and just talk about ait life and things that you need to know to prepare you and get you ready for ait things you should do things you shouldn't do and just all of that jazz so let's get into this all right y'all so if you watch any of my past videos you already know how i feel about bringing things with you to leave to go to the military i have a whole video on what to pack when you go to basic training but what you pack when you go to basic training and what you pack when you go to ait is a little bit different so in AIT, you have a lot more leniency than you had in basic training. In basic training, you had a very strict schedule. You had a very strict dress code. They literally told you what you can do, what you couldn't do, what time you could do it, what time you had to go to bed. But AIT is a little bit different. And depending on what your MOS is and where your AIT is conducted and how long your AIT is, it can really make or break your AIT experience. So when you leave from basic training and you arrive in AIT, you're able to go to the PX and buy a lot of the things you need. Now, depending depending on how long it is you may or may not be able to wear civilian clothes most of the time but you can buy a few things because once you're released in the afternoons nights and weekends you can kind of put on what you want to put on you don't have to bring a whole lot because you're leaving directly from basic training to get to AIT but once you get to your AIT you can buy pretty much whatever you want to buy especially if you have access to the PX now one thing you want to remember one thing you want to remember nowadays in AIT is they are not letting soldiers buy a car if you are planning on buying a car when you get to AIT, you may want to think again. Now, this isn't so bad because you pretty much march wherever you have to go. You pretty much in walking distance of wherever you have to go. But if you want to buy groceries, because you are allowed to buy groceries and snacks and all of that stuff, you don't have a way to carry it back. So when I was in Fort Gordon, actually, it was an AIT training base. And I actually worked at the PX pharmacy. So I would see a lot of the AIT soldiers come to the pharmacy, come to the PX on Saturdays, and they would fill these big black book bags up and actually have to walk back to their barracks room in like 90 degree weather with all of their groceries. So you wanna make sure you get you a nice book bag when you get to AIT. I definitely suggest it is a black book bag because black is the one color that you can and wear in uniform or out of uniform. I remember when I was in AIT, the grocery store in the barracks was a pretty ways away. It probably was at least a mile away. And we would pack down that book bag as much as we could to be able to carry all of our groceries home. Now the next thing that I want you to remember about AIT is that AIT is an area where you can get recycled. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm done with basic training. I have it easy. I've gotten past the hard part. Now I'm here and I'm easy selling. Don't think like that. You don't want to think like that because AIT you can get recycled you can get sent home and you can definitely get kicked out of the army when I went through AIT we had about 50 people in our class when we started by the time we graduated we graduated with 19 people so people either got recycled because they failed more than one test or they got kicked out because they did something dumb on the weekend so definitely remember to take AIT serious because you can definitely get sent home and one of the biggest changes that I'm hearing is that you still have to pass the ACFT. This is something that I've been hearing all along, even last year when the regulations and all of the articles, all of the YouTube videos came out saying that you no longer had to pass a ACFT to graduate. That is not necessarily the case. 
So I hear that there are people getting recycled in basic training as well as AIT if they are not passing that ACFT. So please make sure you are working on your physical fitness still. You are working to improve your run. You are working to improve the leg tuck, all of the areas because the ACFT is not going anywhere and it's definitely one area that you need to focus on to graduate. The fourth thing that I want to talk about in AIT is mail call. So we talked about mail call extensively in basic training and I'll put the video up here if you haven't watched that video. But in AIT you have more access to anything you pretty much order in the mail. So you can order things from Amazon. You can order things from um, Uber Eats. You can order things from friends and family at home. You can have friends and family at home mail things to you. So we don't usually talk about mail call in AIT as much as we talk about mail call in basic training. So I do want to let people know that you will probably get a P.O. box when you get to your AIT. And with that P.O. box, you can pretty much order anything. You are not really limited to the things that you can and cannot buy, get, order, or do when it comes to your mail in AIT. This is an area that you could really thrive in as far as I can see people wanting to buy and order things. But my suggestion is that you start saving in AIT and that brings me to my fifth tip. AIT is an area where you should start saving. Now that you graduated basic training and you have a little bit of money in your pocket, make sure you have all your allotments going to where they need to go. Make sure you are paying any bills that you need to pay. Anything that you were paying on before you joined the military, you may have to continue to pay. Make sure all of the accounts are set up. But this is a time when you should start saving. Your focus should solely be on learning your job, getting the education, passing all your courses. So you don't necessarily need to spend the money on online purchases or buying things that you thought you missed out on while you were in basic training. You are living in a barracks, so you don't have any actual mortgage or rent. You probably have a cell phone bill. You don't really have a car note unless you're still paying on a car that you had prior to joining the military. But take the time, take the advantage to save, save, save. You should be able to build up a savings of at least, I would say about $3,000 by the time you graduate basic training and AIT, depending on how long your AIT is. If you channel your money right if you budget your money right and if you focus on saving i actually have a whole playlist on things that i wish i known before i joined the military and i'm going to put that playlist here if you're interested in finding out more information on things i wish i knew before i joined the military then definitely check out this playlist here and on that note guys i will see you all in the next one bye